Hi there and welcome. Thanks for joining us today. What we're working on today is a good kitchen staple known as beef stock or beef broth. And a lot of commercial ones that you buy in the store are filled with all kinds of extra ingredients and a very, very high dose of sodium. Making it ourselves means we can control what's going into it and we can make sure we have the best ingredients for our family. So today uh, we're going to be starting to work on that. It is a long process. Beef stock is a, a long process. I'll tell you right now, you want to make sure you're at it off and on throughout the whole course of really a, a today's journey. So to start with, I washed up all these beef bones and I put them in this aluminum pan because I'm going to actually do these on the barbecue. Beef bones, when they're roasting, have a bit of an odor to them. And not everyone in our household likes that smell. The dog loves it. Um, but we're going to be doing them outside in the barbecue to just kind of help everybody else out. And it gives a nice smoked barbecue type flavor. So what we're going to do first is we're going to season these. Why would we season them now? Because we want to bring out the best flavor in the meat. And if you season a little bit all throughout the process, the strength of something like salt is going to increase. Um, you don't want to add too much pepper at the beginning because that can give you a bit of a fla bitter flavor. So I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper, um, probably the equivalent of one and a half teaspoons. And normally you double the amount of salt that you're adding um, whenever you're making a seasoning mix. It's normally two parts of salt and one part of pepper. In culinary terms, we use this as gray salt and it is often just simply on the, the counter, ready to go. Gray salt to season your food with. You need both the salt and pepper to get the proper um, taste to come out. So I'm probably close to it. It's not an exact science. And I'm gonna start my barbecue up and we're gonna start roasting these bones because you wanna create an extra flavor by the caramelization process that happens with the meat and the bones. And that's what's gonna give you your dark color for your beef stock later on. So I'm gonna get this started and we'll check in on these bones um, a little bit later when they've been roasted and keep going on with this process as we make our own homemade beef stock. All right, so here we go. We've been roasting these for about an hour. Um, so I had them set um, around three, so medium heat on one side, even lower on the other side. So it's really just the air that's helping cook it, not so much the barbecue underneath. And here's a nice picture of a bone. See how it's all charred and caramelized, a nice brown caramel color. And inside the pan is got all this black bits and things. This actually we want for our stock. So I'm going to pour some water into that and just gently scrub some of that off. And then we're going to pour that over top of our beef bones. Then we're going to continue to pour more water on top. But we're not done with this pan yet. Because what I have to do with this pan next is put the vegetables in. And they also need to be changed color and roasted in this barbecue. So once I get rid of this fond and, and get all those things in, I'll show you the next step as we work on the vegetables. And really, I'm just going to cover the bones with water and put it in my roaster and set it at about 325 and when I add the vegetables and everything all together, uh, you'll see how that goes. Okay, so I've got the meat and some water cooking in the roaster in the house. Now we're going to use that pan we had on the barbecue. I've just kind of left it warm up here. It's going to add a tablespoon or two of just canola oil or vegetable oil, whatever you have on hand. I'm going to add the vegetables you're going to add in. Adding in vegetables is a great way of adding flavor and nutrients. This is not a traditional mirepoix. Uh, a traditional French version of vegetables you're supposed to put in is precisely two parts onion um, and one part celery and one part carrot. Uh, I've just kind of gone through the garden, picked out a few things, add a little bit of garlic and peppers simply because I like the flavor they add. So if you want to just, you know, hey, I'm not going to go fully classical on this. Go for it. Enjoy it. So I'm going to add this now to the hot oil and let that cook until these vegetables start to caramelize. They have that nice brown color on. Then we're going to add them in and we'll add our herbs all at the same time. Add a bit more water and we'll let that cook for a long time. Um, on average, your beef stock should be at least six to eight hours worth of simmering. So 
we're going to get on that right away. I'm just going to cover this one up, turn it up just a wee bit there so it'll cook better and carry on with this process. See you in a bit. All right, so let's take a look at these vegetables. See how they're all nicely, they're dark, but at the same time not completely burnt. That is caramelized. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the meat, and that is we're going to pour just a little bit of the fond on there, but first we're going to add it to our broth. And you can see it's already starting to get close to boiling. So let's add these vegetables in. Some of the vegetables are even sticking to the bottom of the pan. That's not a bad thing. Because again, we're going to add a little bit of water. We're just going to scrape those off. We're going to add some herbs. Maybe a little more water, definitely more salt, and then we'll get this thing going. So let me just scrape this off. This is where a lot of your flavor is actually going to come from. From this stuff on the bottom of the pan, the French call it the fond, F-O-N-D. And this is wonderful for flavor, wonderful for color. We want to use as much as that as we can. You can do this in any kind of stock. But beef stock especially, because we want a firm, like a real bold, hey, this is beef that I'm eating kind of flavor. So we've got that all cleaned up. Got that here. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a stir. As for herbs, all we've done for herbs is I've taken some parsley out of the garden and some thyme, and I've just roughly cut them up and chopped them. And we're just going to dump it in whole like this. We don't have to cut it up very fine because we're going to be cooking this for a long time. There's lots of time for the flavor to come out. And now we're just going to add a bit more water just to make sure that we get a lot of stock on this. So here's our beef bones, herbs, um, the water that we've added, again, we're probably going to add a little bit more so that we're about an inch from the top. We don't want it boiling over. And I'm going to add just a wee bit more salt and a bit more pepper, and we'll adjust that as this time goes on. But really, now it's just a matter of bringing this to a boil, lowering it down to a simmer, so on my roaster, maybe about 275, and cooking it for like the next six to eight hours. Then we're going to properly cool it, store it overnight, and we'll can it sometime tomorrow. All right, so we've had this stock chilled. It was brought down to a really nice cool temperature. That's a food safety issue. And as of right now, we are heating the oven to 265 because we're gonna sterilize our jars at that temperature. And at the same time, we're gonna heat up our stock. Uh, you'll notice there's a bunch of uh, layer of fat just on the surface. We're gonna take that off first because fat you don't want to have um, in your stocks because that can go rancid on the shelf. So we're gonna do that. And at the same time, I'm just going to go over quickly some of the different tools that we have before we get started. All right, so this is our setup that we often use. It's not the most recommended setup for pressure canning, but you know what? Sometimes you got to work with what, uh, what you've got on hand. So we have our fish fryer that we use often with our pressure canner uh, hooked up to a propane. And we will need this 10 pound weight later as we do our canning. Okay, here we go. Uh, there's one more thing we have to do now that we've raised the temperature up um, quite higher. Uh, how high are we? Well, let's take a look. I'm at a simmer. The water's definitely, the liquid is de definitely swirling around, but it's not a full rolling boil, so I know it's not 100 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna check my meat thermometer, well, my digital read, and stick it in the center just to get an idea what temperature we're at. We should be at least 165 Fahrenheit because um, you're reheating food. We are already at that temperature. I'll set that aside and clean that off. But we didn't taste it, did we? So we're going to get a little dish. Woohoo, that's hot. Let's pour a little bit into there. And let's, let's, let's give this a bit of a try. Oh yeah, that's beef stock. Okay, this is a very important part of the canning process. You can see the button has popped up and steam is steadily coming out. 
we have to wait for the steam to eject for 10 minutes now. So I'm setting my timer for 10 minutes. I'm going to put my weight on and uh, make sure it stays at the right pressure that we want to have it on. All right. So what we're doing here is I put my weight on and I wanted to wait until it got up to pressure. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm following the manufacturer's directions on this. So I totally recommend following your manufacturer's directions. And you'll see in the links below the recommended from the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and the USDA on how to pressure can because um, there is a risk of botulism. But at the same time, we've done this enough. We know how much the risk is. Um, we're taking care of what we do. Sometimes I'll actually can a little bit longer just to make sure. So I want to make sure that it's doing this this sound about four times every minute uh, for about five to ten seconds. Then I know I'm at the pressure that I want to be. And for what we're doing today, it takes about 40 minutes at this level. Um, so we're just going to have to wait, and I'll join you when we're at the next stage. So here we are. It's um, It's been quite a while since we started this whole project. Now, we did take a day where we just left the beef broth in the fridge. Um, however, here we are. Now it's all set, ready to go on the shelf tomorrow. So I have to leave it like this for a day. Just make sure these seals are in place. And then we'll take the rings off and we'll store them without the rings on them, just in case, because sometimes you might get the seal pop up and then because there's a ring on it, it'll actually force it back down again. And that's not a correct seal, that's a false seal. Um, like this one here, you can see it's actually down. Whereas this one here, you can see there's a bump right here and that's not a full seal. So if this one doesn't actually go down, I can either try and reseal it, or I'll probably just stick it in the fridge and we'll use it uh, in a sauce or a gravy or a soup sometime soon. All right, so thanks for joining me as we've been making our beef broth made from scratch. I hope that you wanna try this at home, even if you don't can it. Um, this beef broth would freeze really well, and you can freeze it in a, I like to freeze in both medium-sized freezer bag at a time. Uh, the reason why I prefer putting them on the shelf in this this way by canning them, it leaves me a little more freezer space. And at the same time, if there's a power outage, I don't have to be concerned about trying to cook up my beef stock right away uh, if it's a prolonged power outage. So now what I'm going to be doing is labeling it. Make sure you label it so you know how old it is. Uh, really something like this should be consumed within six months to a year. Um, I don't normally, with beef stock especially, it does not last long around here, uh, probably at most four months, because we'll we'll use it. We'll make it into soup, we'll use it as a base for a great gravy, and all kinds of things. So again, like we like to say around here, why don't you go out and try this? You can do this too. Get a few beef bones, get a few vegetables, roast them up, get some nice color in there, boil them for a good six to eight hours, remember, and then... Cool it down properly and either can uh, freeze it, use it up, or you can try the pressure canning. Uh, this is really an introduction to pressure canning. My primary uh, instructions for that is follow the, the guidelines that you have for your own pressure canner and work with what you have. So thanks for joining us today. And remember, you can do this too. Have a great day. Bye. <music>